The government has announced its plan to make New Zealand predator-free by 2050. An initial $28 million will kickstart the ambitious conservation project and MP Michael Woodhouse joins us now to talk about it. Good evening. Good evening, Rebecca. Why is protecting our native species so important? Well, I think there's two reasons. Firstly, they're just an iconic part of our New Zealand brand. Our native flora and fauna is known globally, really, with the Kiwi, the magnificent sounds of the Tui. Uh, and the second reason is, of course, they are under tremendous threat from predation. It's estimated that we lose 25 million birds every year from predators. So it's really important that we increase our efforts to keep them safe. What kind of pred predators are we talking about here? Well, we know about possums, mm -hmm. obviously, and they are uh, very much so. But increasingly, stoats are becoming um, one of the number one, probably the number one predator of birds in the forest. We've also got rats, and every time we have what's known as the mast, the very high levels of fruiting in our native trees, we have a massive uh, growth in the population of rats, mm. uh, and they're also particularly dangerous for our birds. Who needs to cooperate for this scheme to work? Well, what's going to happen is a company will be set up called Predator Free New Zealand Limited. It's going to be seed funded with that $28 million mm -hmm. and it will have government efforts right behind it. So that's Department of Conservation, Ministry of Primary Industries and the Science and Enterprise part of IMBI. But we're not going to be doing it alone. We also know that there's a great number of uh, other stakeholders working towards reducing the impact on our forests. So we'll have people like um, business, philanthropic organisations, iwi, other NGOs, Forest and Bird and so on, will all be able to contribute in order to be able to uh, meet that very challenging goal. Mm. Do you foresee any problems with taking on what, what could be viewed as quite an ambitious task? Oh, tremendously ambitious, mm. and there are going to be problems that we probably haven't even thought of yet. So we're going to need to take a bit of a regional approach, a, a progressive approach. There are some interim goals for 2025 to effectively test uh, what's possible to come up with a technology that might eradicate one of those predators, to make sure that all of our offshore islands are largely predator free, mm -hmm. and to test the possibility that we can do this on a large land mass by taking, say, about a 20,000 hectare uh, block and make that predator free. So there's, there's going to be massive challenges in doing that. And, um, uh, but it's great to be able to set the goal. I think the very fact that we are setting a goal of being predator free by the middle of the century gives us a target to aim for. Mm. How important will future scientific development be to, to reaching that goal? Oh, tremendously important. In fact, I think if we are to be able to achieve it, we're going to need to use technologies that haven't been invented yet. Mm. So that's an interesting um, uh, challenge. But already there have been discussions around, for example, um, audio technologies that create high frequency sounds or frequencies that uh, repel predators from certain areas. We know that DNA modification can create in uh, male rats uh, uh, offspring that are infertile, so they effectively break that breeding cycle. I think we're going to see a lot of technologies around that and that's why science is going to be the important component of making sure we get to that goal. Mm. Is the whole of New Zealand affected or are there specific areas that, that really need to be focused on? Look, I think the whole of the country is affected and if we take Dunedin for example, it's, it's, there's no doubt within even our green belt in the urban area, you talk about feral cats, we mm. certainly have those problems. We have rats, stoats and possums right through the city. But the largest part of the loss of birds goes into our national forests. Mm. So Fiordland is a really good example of millions and millions of birds being killed by predators every year. Mm. What sort of role will you be playing in this scheme? Well, I'd like to see Dunedin lead the way in this early stage. Mm -hmm. So if you take an area like, for example, the Otago Peninsula, it is a part of the landmass, but it might be one area where we can perhaps control the movement of predators once we've started to eradicate them. I'd like to hear from local organisations that are keen to get going early so that we can test these in places like the peninsula, maybe the north coast, Blueskin Bay, areas that we know we have a predator problem and we can take a regional approach, a, a manageable approach to testing some of those new technologies. So I'll be looking forward to, um, to driving this quite hard for the local region. And that will keep you busy. Yes, it will. National MP Michael Woodhouse, thanks so much for your time. Thanks, Rebecca.